what you were just saying really um, transitions well into talking about your piece, Access Denied, because, I mean, in that, it's like, not only are you making artwork that is about your relationship with what you've gone through and empowering yourself, I mean, now you're taking it to, like, a community level and really exposing, like, this big issue in the art scene, you know? Um, so, like, when you first started that piece, like, were you ever... Like, oh, I wonder what they're going to think. Or did you ever have any concern about the reactions from the galleries you were calling out? Well, um, I started, I didn't want to make the work. I started just having this experience uh -huh. um, ever since I became disabled. And then when I actually was in grad school, like at CalArts, I was in a class and everybody was in the class and we were all photo media master students and we were going to Bergamot Station and we were all supposed to go to this gallery because we we're all supposed to get like new exposure to a gallery and like you know maybe talk to the curator talk to the owner and everybody could get in but me and yeah. everybody was included but me and I was in a class at one of the most at one of the most top like prestigious art schools in the country and I'm still going to an inaccessible gallery during my master's program yeah. and it's 2015. That's and incredible. Like, so, not in a good way. <laughs> no. So um, that was like, that was my experience. And it was kind of, daunt it wasn't daunting. It was just something that I had already experienced. But I knew from like learning about performance art that what I was experiencing could be something that would be important to pay attention to. And just Absolutely. drawing and just being able to draw attention to that experience could be a piece of art. Yeah. And, um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And like I was, I went from trying to think about it and then that from that experience, that experience, I was the first time I recorded. Mm -hmm. That experience was the first time I recorded yeah. was when I was in grad school. Yeah. yeah that was the first time so I recorded. So you just did it and you didn't really have an idea that no, it was going to mm -mm. No, no, nothing. I was just like, I, I have my girlfriend, her name is Jasmine Urea. Um, she's also a, a photo media installation artist in Los Angeles. Um, she lives in Oh, I should. I don't remember where she was. She was off the 105. I can't remember. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jasmine. Um, uh, but she was the one who recorded me. And I was just like, dude, just record this for me. So, so I don't know what we're going to do with this. But like, look at these people are just going by me. Like they're just yeah. walking by me. I'm sitting here at the end of the stairs and like, they're yeah. just going by me. This is like too surreal. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then like I'm just sitting at the bottom of the stairs and people are just like oh oh okay like if I'm a fixture yeah, yeah and I then I kept that and I talked about it while I was at grad school everybody at school told me that I was ridiculous and wrong and bad oh, yeah. and, like I had That's mentors so and advisors telling me that I was pushing back against the wrong part of the community um, that I was <laughs> pushing back against as, people as who, opposed to who? <laughs> yeah. um, as opposed to like big box galleries that have enough money to make things accessible oh. yeah or like a museum or like you know like a like a high profile institution mm. like a high profile institution but all those places have enough money to be able yeah. to be accessible yeah, totally. like and right. um but these places were you know independently owned by some people that actually went to cal arts mm -hmm. and so some of the mentors there were um you know kind of taken aback by the situation because then I would be, you know, attacking other people. Were you surprised by the pushback or were you hoping for more support or expecting it? I expected support, yeah. but right. I didn't expect that. Yeah, that's um, very surprising. Yeah, um, I didn't expect that. They were more concerned about the, the, the reputation, the reputation of the space. Yeah, yeah. They, literally they were more uh, concerned about the reputation of the space than of the fact that I couldn't get in there. And Jesus. like, like I shouldn't actually be paying attention to the fact that, oh, like I shouldn't make note of it because they didn't have enough money to fix it, but they do have the ability to not rent from that place and continue to just be in that space and move to another one. Yeah. And yeah, I understand that rent's expensive, but that's your, cho your choice is to be open and your choice is to be open to the public. And I'm included in that. And Absolutely. if you don't want to include me in that then you, it's okay if I take note of it. You want to talk just really briefly about the installation of Access Denied? You were using, like, computer monitors to display your images. Oh, to TV, actually. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I got, like, a really thin 55-inch uh, 
like regular TV, a flat screen TV. And then um, I edited, I had to edit all the video vertically. So I had to like, I had to turn all the video vertically and did like 20 hours of video editing. I, my video is super simple. And it, it's only like image and video that I have myself and I flipped it all vertically and then I I I hold I turn the monitor vertically and I lean it up against the wall. So it's like awesome. sitting in the same position as I would be sitting in front of a space. Very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So mm -hmm. it kind of requires the person to get on your level, like to look at it? No, because you can uh, be standing and looking at the video. Oh, right. Because I mean I'm I, yeah, I was going to make a reference to something outside of the frame, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> I was going to say, like, how that picture is sitting up against the wall like that, uh -huh. and how it's, like, leaning oh, cool. off of it, that's kind of, like, how it is. It's, okay. like, it leans, it just, like, leans up against the wall. Cool. And then it, like, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it looks great like that. Thanks. I think it would be an amazing opportunity to just <laughs> hear um, maybe some things from your experience that able-bodied people need to know about, you know, artists with disabilities or just people with disabilities in general. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I think, I think a good starting point is that all disabled people want to be included, um, whether it's in physical space, whether it's in applications, whether it's in, you know, having a reader, like on your visual representation, um, you know, and we don't want to be treated as an other. And we're treated as others very often. And I understand art is like an edgy on the skirts or like, especially in LA, it's like actually not an edgy thing. It's like a very prominent uh, uh, collegiate, like not collegiate, but like, uh, you know, there's money, there's power, there's like transactions that happen. And like people, um, people with disabilities just want to be people. Like we are just people. We just have extra help that we need. And we don't have to um, we don't have to tell you what's up with us it's not our responsibility and it's um, you know it's not always open for discussion just because we're in space how about that yeah that's some yeah. good thing yeah I mean just because like just because I'm in you just because I come into your space or just because I I'm having a conversation with you um, my experience of my life um, as a disabled person isn't just regular available information because people with disabilities, you know, sometimes when somebody has a visible, vis a visible disability, like there's trauma that yeah. has caused that to happen. Yeah. So just like, if you were to randomly just come up to me and say, what happened to you? Yeah. I know that most people in the art community are not like that uh, at all, but like, you know, it's, you know, people with disabilities don't owe you their story. Yeah. And people with, are not taught how to speak to people with disabilities because it's not like, an important part of res respectful conversation or whatever, but people with disabilities don't owe you their story. And um, that's one thing that people with able-bodied privilege and understanding could take that my story is is available when we have an intimate connection. Yeah. And instead of just when we are um, in public. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes it's funny too. Like you see this with like, you know, certain liberal type. They don't do. know what to say. They and really so they do. like overcome stuff up because it's like they secretly feel like uncomfortable. They just people, <laughs> yeah. Like, they just they like bring that but say it, and you're like, <laughs> really do. stop. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just a person. Yeah, I don't yeah. really want to talk about that thing yeah. <laughs> that one time. <laughs>